Hi everyone, welcome back to Medieval 2 Total War, our English campaign. Um, I, I regret to inform you all that, uh, as you can see here, we have a, a new mission to cease hostilities with the uh, Kingdom of France. So close, yet so far. Uh, I'm really starting to consider... <laughs> Uh, I'm wondering how pissed would the Pope be if we were to take Paris right now, uh, after he had explicitly told us not to. I'm not entirely sure. That may very well get us excommunicated. Uh, so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to, uh, lift the siege, but I'm just gonna leave, uh, Simon Russell where he is. Uh, because in five turns, we'll just besiege the place and we have a catapult, so we might be able to, uh, bust through the walls with, with just a catapult and not give the Pope enough time to issue another mission. I'm not exactly sure if that will work, but we can always give it a shot. Uh, I'm still pretty hesitant about uh, getting excommunicated at this point in time, uh, considering how... Well, I mean, the Holy Romans are already excommunicated, and seem, they seem to be doing fine, but uh, we've got this massive open front to the south here, potentially, if Aragon or Castile or... Uh, well, I suppose it's only the Kingdom of Leon that's left, and Aragon, basically. But if Aragon, Portugal, and Leon decided to attack, I'd have to move a bunch of armies to close that gap. And also, uh, I'm sure uh, Norway and Denmark would invade by sea, potentially. And all sorts of shit uh, that I don't really want to have happen right now. But anyway, we are besieging Clermont. Uh, the Genoese are very uh, unimpressed with that. Uh, and in reply they have formed an alliance with the Kingdom of Leon which is not a huge deal considering the Kingdom of Leon uh, they've only got one province and it's their capital uh, their capital Toledo and whatever province Toledo resides in that is the only territory they hold so uh, not a extremely powerful ally but an ally nonetheless I suppose uh, Archibald of Warwick has a uh, potential bride he, he, he is now betrothed uh, if you remember correctly, uh, Archibald of Warwick is actually King Herbert, Simmond Russell's, and uh, Maria the Snob's uh, adopted brother, I, I would assume. I don't really remember much of Archibald of Warwick because basically we just stashed him in Carnarvon ever since we adopted him, so. Uh, but anyway, I don't see why we can't marry Gladys of Bayou to uh, Archibald of Warwick. And maybe she'll make him a nice tapestry. And, uh, that would be very nice, I think. So we now have Gladys of Warwick, and hopefully they have some sons. Uh, also look at this, Simmond Russell's first son, Samuel Russell, is now of age. There we go, he's got a nice little purr stash and, uh, wondrous eyes. And, uh, I don't really know where he is, but, uh, for the time being, let's just go give Edmund of Lincoln a hand here, because he is perpetually being... Uh, hunted by pagan priests in the forest, and uh, I think he's actually beginning to worry a little bit. He's getting a bit uh, a bit nervous, so we're going to retreat to the Christian uh, Novgorodian territories here. Even though there is a Lithuanian army right here, and yet even more pagan priests blocking the way to Novgorod, which is actually held by the Lithuanians, which makes sense as to why uh, it's surrounded by pagan priests. But, um... Yes, sire. Edmund of Lincoln, he's he's having a hard time escaping the, the pagan of being cannibalized and uh, ritualized and whatnot. So uh, he's GTFO-ing uh, out of there very quickly. Look at that. We made no money at all, but we are slowly climbing the ranks militarily, financially, uh, population-y, and also overall-y. Um, <laughs> I just made all those words up, but I don't care. Okay, Aubrey, of C Aubrey Seymour. Is now the Duke of Winchester. Andrew Grishiel, of course, is now the Duke of Exeter, and Samuel Russell has come of age. Uh, I guess he's in uh, in London, but he is a general, a militarily minded man, and he seems pretty good. He is sharp, iron-fisted, and naturally robust and relatively healthy, uh, which are all very, very good things. Uh, well, his mother's identity is certain. Alrighty, okay, uh, anyway, since he is militarily minded, we're going to send him to Nottingham to receive a military education. Uh, now, there's a few buildings having been built. Here we got Exeter now has a mining network and we need some roads. Uh, it's gonna be hard to 
get our priests in and out of Exeter if they have to weather muddy uh, roads along the way. Uh, Ren, of course, could use a fairground, I would assume, and Visby has now now has stables. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on in Visby. Uh, my only question is, if I were to recruit Viking Raiders, would they get free upkeep? So I'm going to give it a try, and uh, there we go. Scouts, this is our new unit, which was... Uh, we are now able to have, due to that, uh, stable. If I build a practice range, you can see here that I get Norse archers, and these guys look fucking badass. Holy shit. They have ridiculously massive shields on their arms that they have to heft up every time they want to take a shot. Um, I think I'm going to build that range, actually, just for those uh, Norse rain uh, archers, I suppose. Oh, shit. Captain Charles now. We've just got so many... Uh, neutral armies in and out of our territory. It's making me very uncomfortable. Uh, and we don't really have much of a garrison to repel such an invasion, but let, let's just hope that it doesn't come to that. It does not come to blows in Visby because that would be very terrible for us. I would assume we would lose there, uh, most definitely. Anyway, in the south here we've got King Herbert, who can probably retreat back to Marseille. Like so, ooh, we don't have any space. What, we're, what I'm going to do is give all of this siege equipment to uh, Barty Carr. There we go. And he can head north towards Lyon. And hopefully that is enough to get the king. No, that is not enough. Um, I'm going to have to disband uh, some of these spear militia units. I'm actually going to disband this archer unit because it is not necessarily needed. There we are. Now, King Herbert can just garrison Marseille for now. Um... As Barty Carr marches towards Lyon, as I previously mentioned. Um, okay, we got Jasper Maltravers going to Toulouse to govern that fucking place. Uh, govern the shit out of that place. Um, yeah, you know what? These Templars are pretty, uh, pretty good. Oh, here we go. They are even better than our Feudal Knights, but probably half the cost. Gee golly, I would use them in a crusader army <laughs> in a heartbeat um but as i mentioned in the comments it would be a little weird to have templars just roaming around uh europe doing english deeds um all right aubrey wells here is trading glass still and you know what uh our merchant game is a little weak lately so i think what i need to do is recruit some merchants out of london and or york and send them across the world. Here we go. I got one merchant on the way from London. I'll recruit yet another in York. Here we are. And uh, like I said, we'll send them around the world eventually. Um, My Lord. Let's see. We have agents all over the place, but it's hard to pick them out on the map here. Uh, I've just got to find perhaps a spy. Where Nicholas Bridges here is going to scout Metz, which is massive. Uh, the Germans are kind of kicking ass on the uh, western front here. They've got quite a few armies outside of Paris and this little fort here, which makes me slightly uncomfortable. I have a feeling they're going to besiege Paris within those next five turns, and uh, that would definitely be unfortunate. That would open up a border with the Holy Romans, and they would have two very strong cities, uh, Paris as well as Rome, right there. Um, those are territories that I was definitely hoping to have, but I guess it was not meant to be. Uh, okay. I'm going to get this spy to scout this uh, little road here for Barty Carr, and I'm sure you can scout up here as well. You know what? I'm going to take Alan Stafford, and I'm going to send him. Uh, well, I would ultimately like to assassinate the Pope, but I doubt that's going to happen. But what I can do is just cruise for some targets here. Ericino Volpato is looking like a good target. Oh, my God. There are a lot of generals in this army, and by a lot, I mean there are literally five generals in this army, and for some reason, Vico Di Vittorio is the easiest man to kill, but he only has a 24% success rate. That is nuts. Why? It's basically all generals in this army and two additional units. Uh, that would be a very easy army to defeat if I was given the opportunity. Um, no. Very odd uh, on the part of the Genoese there. That's very freaking odd. All right. So, I didn't actually get to look at Genoa, but it seems very, very weak. 
just by itself. Eldelmo Chiza, uh, de Chiza is the only Genoese general that is down in the south in Italy here for some reason. Um, we can see that Milan, though, has actually been captured by the Venetians. I'm not sure how long they've held on to that, but it has effectively fractured the Genoese kingdom. They've got a few holdings in France itself, which is uh, landlocked due to our owning Marseille. And then they've got Genoa as well as Pisa here. And then basically it's just uh, Northern Africa. So they've got two halves of, of a kingdom now, and they'd have to tread through enemy territory to <laughs> exchange goods between the two. So that's very unfortunate for them. Uh, we just have to collapse this bubble now by taking Clermont, Dijon, Lyon, and Bern, and then that leaves half of Genoa on the Mediterranean Sea. Not a big deal. But anyway, I, I, I'm sure we can move on any second now. Um, we can actually get a unit of crossbowmen. We might as well do so. Crossbows are very good, and they're not exactly cheap, though. But compared to how much we're paying for our feudal units, it's, it's not a big deal. All right, uh, I'm going to end the turn. Hopefully... Uh, we're able to take Clermont next turn. Uh, Simon of Russell is just going to be chilling outside of Paris. You know what? He is technically besieging Paris uh, because, you know, he has a massive army just outside the walls. I mean, of course, they haven't actually... Uh, we're not slinging arrows or anything at them, and that basically appeases the Pope, but we are all, for all intents and purposes, besieging uh, Paris right now. Um, honestly. Anyway. And we're back, and right away we've got a new bride for King Herbert. Uh, I'm not sure what happened, but it seems... Uh, well, King Herbert was never actually married to begin with, uh, apparently. But he does have an adopted son, so you know what? We might as well marry Ellen Kurthos, Kurthos to King Herbert anyway. Maybe he'll get a biological son, which would be very interesting indeed. Uh, Perkin Cavendish has been executed for heresy in Dublin for some reason and uh, that was the Bishop of Dublin which is very unfortunate uh, for aforementioned Dublin I'm gonna have to recruit another priest in Exeter and uh, fucking carry him over there with Admiral Philip there we are oh boy Aubrey Seymour however was found innocent at trial he was <laughs> he's just been uh, inducted to the uh, royal family here who wife is fair useful but also unpleasant wow I feel sorry for Aubrey Seymour but anyway he was just just placed in Winchester as the Lord and Savior and already this fucking de Cardinal is uh, trying to inquisit him some of these guys have really sweet names Zeistus de Tertio that is fucking badass Elias de Cardinal and, of course, Honorius. We cannot forget about Honorius. Here he is. Honorius Petri. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, we do have a new mission from the Pope to cease hostilities with the Republic of Genoa. And I really should have seen that coming. And I suppose, I guess we'll just have to have um, fucking David of Salisbury to do the exact same thing. We'll lift that siege. Oh, shit. Uh, lift the siege. And we'll just camp outside of Clermont for no fucking reason. I guess. That's just what we'll have to do. Uh, he has a trebuchet, and I really, I should have just attacked that first turn, but that opportunity has passed, so we'll have to wait another, another five turns until that new fucking mission passes as well. And then, uh, I guess we'll just have to assault all these towns on the first turn, take them, and basically throw the double fucking fingers up to the Pope, because he's being the biggest asshole I can I can actually I can imagine because I don't know I mean it's fair that he wants us all to get along but it, I it wasn't me who started this war but I'm certainly gonna fucking finish it uh, given enough time we're just gonna have to wait another fucking two and a half years until we can besiege these play oh my god we are losing a lot of cash uh, I assume that was due to construction that we're losing all that money uh, okay we got a lot of trait increases here uh, Jasper and Maltravers is now the Comte de Toulouse. Uh, and that seems to be the only thing that's really worth mentioning. Except for Rufus Boyd, he seems to be quite the fucking... Holy shit, right out the gate he's got seven uh, points in his merchant skill, his mercantile skill. Uh, York, who is it? Harold Gilby. Oh, and Arthur, Arthur Giles as well. I don't know how long Arthur Giles has been there, but we're going to send all three merchants. Uh to shack up with Admiral Edgar, and uh, I'm sure they'll 
Oh my god, this guy is... Oh, he's not that old. I thought he was going to be like 67. Maybe Harold Gilby is the old one. No, neither of them are that old. But either way, they're going to be hitting up Europe to make some cash. Hopefully, if we get there before they die. Anyway, uh, the Kingdom of Portugal is now at war with the Republic of Genoa. So perhaps they'll actually be useful and do some shit. I don't know. I'm not really confident. Okay, so it appears that Viking Raiders do in fact get free upkeep from a castle in Visby. So that is great. Um... Apples to apples here. It appears that the Viking Raiders are a lot better than our Spear Militia, so I may just entirely replace them. But, uh, no, I, I'll just leave it as is for now. Okay, we have built an archery range in Nottingham. And I would build a lot of shit, but our stores of cash are slowly dwindling. So I'm going to try to keep it... Um, to try to cut down on uh, spending a little bit, and... By doing that, we are we're going to only build necessary buildings. Uh, Nottingham. Yeah, looking at the cost of these buildings, you can understand why we are going broke. Okay, but I'm going to build this crop, uh, actually. Crops are always useful to have. Cain doesn't need any of this shit. Carnarvon, same thing. Uh, Galway. We'll build some farms. I don't see why not. Edinburgh. Um... Doesn't need anything. And Marseille finally has farms themselves. And uh, we'll build a stonemason's hut, apparently, in Marseille. There we go. Uh, hopefully... Okay, we have projected profits of 160 gold coins. Uh, but a projected treasury total of 39,000. Which is 7,000 more than we have now. I guess we'll just have to wait and see uh, about those predictions. Maybe it'll come true, maybe not. Uh, but either way, Barty Carr is going to camp right outside yes. Lyon with his massive siege army. And uh, we'll passively, aggressively just stare over the walls into the hearts and souls of all the Genoese fucks in here. Basically saying, you know, we're just biding our time. You know, you give me a couple of years, I'm going to be all up in there. And uh, there's not much you can do about it. Uh, and this poor guy is going to be standing idly by watching the whole thing unravel. Which is not the greatest for him. But uh, there you go. Okay, I'm going to get King Herbert to build some watchtowers. Specifically up here, if possible. And it is. There we go. Uh, and yet another here. There we go. Hopefully he doesn't get uh, ruthlessly murdered in the woods of Gascony here. But, um, not, uh, you know, it's a, it's a possibility. Um, for some reason it appears that Gascony... Uh, Oh, I see. Never mind. The border is here along the river. I was thinking that it should have been somewhere in here, but it wasn't. I'm just blowing smoke out my ass right now. I don't know what the hell's going on. Anyway, okay. Uh, hopefully King Herbert, as I was saying, can retreat to Marseille before he gets uh, murdered. Alright, so we are... <laughs> we have a uh, theoretical besieging of Paris and Clermont and Lyon going on right now. We're just going to bide our time for another uh, four or five turns, and then we'll have a, a bit of territory. If uh, if Paris is still standing at the end of those four or five turns, of course, because the Germans may take it, uh, which would actually piss me off quite a lot. Uh, I cannot wait until this Pope dies. Look at this. Uh, he is 67 years old, Pope Galatius, and you know what? We should probably commission a crusade pretty quickly here on Frankfurt or Vienna. I would say Frankfurt... Here we go. What does he think of that? Holy shit, we, we just called a crusade on Frankfurt. Ah, uh, okay. Because, of course, the Holy Romans have been excommunicated, and you can call crusades on excommunicated targets as if they were uh, Muslims, I suppose. But anyway, this should disrupt the German war machine, I'm hoping. Uh, at this point in time, we are not exactly on the best of terms, but we're not enemies. Just trying to sabotage the Holy Romans uh, behind the scenes. Now that, say, that may have seemed a little sudden, but I think we looked at Crusades last episode and I've been thinking about it. And uh, you know what, there we go. I've now called a Crusade on the Holy Romans and hopefully uh, the Danes, Poland, Hungary, uh, and some other motherfuckers come over and just send massive Crusade armies to fuck with uh, the Holy Romans. That would be great. Uh, that may slow their progress towards Paris and the remainder of Europe. Uh, because they're kind of dominating right now. And actually, if we take a look at our faction rankings, here we are. Here's England. Let's take a look at our top five factions. In the top, We're not even in the top five, actually. But this is uh, right here, the Holy Romans. They're in the middle. They are 
below the Quaresmians and also the Byzantines. Uh, but that's not saying much. They have also declined recently, whereas we have just plateaued for some reason. Uh, but Genoa is actually rising as well as uh, the Fatimids. Uh, but we're not even in the top five, which is a little annoying. But we do appear to be above, I don't know, like 20 factions right there. We're kind of just floating in the middle. We are, in fact, uh, number six, which is not too bad in the grand scheme of things. It could be better, it could be worse, but we have a long ways to go. And so apparently, vassalizing kingdoms does not actually uh, allow you to complete your victory conditions here, so I'm going to actually have to annihilate Scotland by taking the remaining two cities, Aberdeen as well as Inverness, and probably Bruges if they're still holding on to that in time. I would like to take them out uh, right now, uh, well, within a, a little while anyway, yes. I guess. After our war with Genoa and France has ended and we can recoup our money a bit, then, you know, after a few years of peacetime, then we can probably uh, go to war with Scotland yet again. And uh, that will be that. But anyway, I am talking a lot and we really need to be ending the turn here. Turn 99, we're getting so close to that 100 turn mark. So the Fatimids, who, uh, of course, declared war on me after we drew up a ceasefire, are now asking for another ceasefire, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask for uh, probably some maps, but also they got to pay me regular tribute to the tune of a thousand florins before ten turns. So, ten thousand florins uh, for a while. They find that generous, so what I'm actually going to do is crank that up a bit. We'll go, I don't know, 2,500 for five turns. Let's see what they think about that. That's still generous. Okay, let's just go fucking nuts. We'll go 2,500 for 10 turns, which is 25,000 florins just for uh, a ceasefire, and we're not even... We haven't attacked the Fatimids in probably like 50 fucking years. And that, they find that balanced for some reason. Here we go. Just we reject it. Never mind. This you speak of, okay, well, you know what? Instead of 25,000 florins, what they're going to do is give us 24.7 or some shit. Actually, I think they're giving us 25 point something over three turns, though, which is very odd. They don't want to give us maps, though, so I'm going to not give them maps. Why would I give them maps? Here we go. They think that's balanced. Damn, man. I'm such a good negotiator. <laughs> I just got 24,000 florins. And I didn't even have to do jack shit. But anyway, we're going to continue. <laughs> okay, so we got a new mission to join the Crusade. Which, actually, you know what? I think uh, would be a good idea. And to commemorate this event, I'm actually going to recruit some Knights Templar. <laughs> because uh, technically it's a Crusade. So I don't... I mean, why wouldn't they be involved? I don't know. Uh, but look at this. Holy shit. <laughs> These are all the factions that have agreed to join this crusade. Venice, Sicily, Genoa, Denmark, Portugal, Poland, Lyon, Hungary, Aragon, the Crusader States. And you know what? Uh, Denmark and Poland are... Denmark, Poland, and Hungary uh, are very good. And Venice as well, actually, are... I'm glad that they joined. Poland is right here. Venice uh, is right here. Uh, Hungary right here. And Denmark right here. So, the Holy Romans have actually been surrounded by... A few very strong factions, and they're all going for Frankfurt. I already saw uh, a crusading army from Denmark somewhere in here. They marched south. Uh, I'm not sure where the hell they went, but uh, look at that. Hamburg has already been taken. Uh, I don't know if that was just recently, but there we go. The Danes have already taken Hamburg. Uh, the entire province of Saxony now belongs to them. That is... Uh, a bit of a ding to the Holy Romans already. If I were them, I would be pulling my armies out of uh, France's territory here, uh, <laughs> as well as Scotland's, and fucking bum rush for Frankfurt. Oh man, I, I could not have asked for a better result. Holy shit. Uh, okay, we are actually above 40,000 florins yet again, and if I don't spend money for a few more turns, then I'm sure our stocks will recuperate very quickly. Uh, okay, we now have a tourney field in Bordeaux, which is the highest tournament field you can build. But look at this. Uh, we can now host tournaments. Um, quarterly tournaments. Monthly tournaments. Yearly tournaments. Uh, these all impact the income of the town. I'm not really sure 
what bonuses they give. Perhaps bonuses to public order, it appears. And that's it. It just boosts public order, but reduces income, which is not the greatest. Uh, Bordeaux is pretty, pretty happy to begin with. Um, it, it appears that yearly tournaments don't do anything at all. Uh, I'm sure we, we may get some events when these tournaments fire, perhaps. I've never actually had to use these tournaments. Uh, but we might as well spring for quarterly tournaments. Uh, we lose 400 uh, florins for entertainment, but we gain 10% en uh, entertainment. 10% uh, public order, rather. Uh, we might as well try quarterly tourneys. I don't know what this does. Uh, I'm hoping it fires some events. Uh, but anyway, I'm sure... No, it doesn't appear that Bordeaux really needs any more buildings. I will build a crop, though, just for shits and gigs. Okay. Uh, Simon Bernadiston, our spy who just scouted this... Uh, sorry, scouted Burn. Uh, he has just died, actually, which is a little unfortunate. He just scouted this road for Barty Carr, marched north, and promptly fell over and died, uh, actually on top of this massive pile of apples right here. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, but anyway, that appears to be the only thing that's happened, really. Uh, except for we, we now have a priest in Exeter, and his name is... Uh, I don't know. I would assume it's Lionel Brandon, because uh, we had uh, some trait shit going on with Lionel Brandon on that screen there. Uh, but anyway, he seems to be a better bishop than the guy we currently have in Exeter, which is slightly ironic. But uh, anyway, he's going to be heading to Dublin to replace that uh, heretic that just got absolutely annihilated by that uh, Inquisitor. There we go. Admiral Philip is going to be ferrying him on the way. Admiral Hugh, uh, I totally forgot about you, but you can head back. Yeah, okay, uh, relations getting good. Okay, here we go. Yeah, wow, okay, that's <laughs> that's pretty great. Holy shit. I suppose we'll have to build a crusade army. And I don't see why it can't be led by King Herbert. You know, we're basically just going to head towards Frankfurt... And we may be able to take some German towns uh, along the way. Uh, this does, of course, put us at war with the Germans themselves. I hadn't really considered that for some reason. Uh, that means we can annihilate these armies around Paris ourselves, and that would be great. Um, we may be able to just take Rom from, uh, from the Germans along the way. Uh, maybe Metz would be a good target, actually. We'll head towards Metz with King Herbert. Uh, we'll take it, and then we can march towards Frankfurt, and maybe we can take that as well. I don't want to overextend that much, really. Uh, Mets wouldn't be too bad. I mean, it would be pretty bad, actually. Um, I would like to refrain from taking towns from the Holy Romans that can't actually be accessed uh, very easily by our forces. I think Antwerp would be actually the best target to take, or even uh, Groningen up here. Because we can just sail across the sea and land armies there very easily. Uh, if I, if, For example, if I wasn't at war with Genoa or France, I'd have to get uh, military access agreements just to access my own territory. Uh, but anyway, I suppose the only target that would be really smart to take would be Antwerp, actually. I just don't know if we'd be able to swing <laughs> through Antwerp to Frankfurt. It might be a little difficult. You know what? I'm actually... I'm not going to join this crusade right away. Uh, I'm sorry, Knights Templar. Uh, it's just not viable at this point in time. Until I take uh, Clermont, Lyon, Dijon. I'm not sure how long this crusade is going to go on. But uh, anyway, uh, I hope you viewers are okay with that. I just don't want to have a split kingdom, uh, which, which I hope you understand. But anyway, um, I'm really pissed with the Pope, and I'm going to end it here. <laughs> We still have to wait a few more turns to uh, get these uh, missions over and done with yet again. Uh, round two of these missions, so three or four turns. So I guess by 1200 AD we should be in Clermont drinking wine and fucking bitches. Same with uh, Paris as well as Lyon. Uh, around 1200 AD it, it's going to be our, our, our salvation, basically. <laughs> But anyway, everyone, as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you when I make my next video.